Uh, hi there, and in this video I'm just going to go through part two of your revision sheet. <clears throat> you have 20 people, 12 has an interest in trains, and 10 has an interest in planes. And this is represented information in a Venn diagram and a two-way table. And the one thing I'll say is that a Venn diagram and a two-way table are both really the same thing. Really, a two-way table just represents a Venn diagram. So you don't usually have to do two. It's sort of whatever method you prefer. But a lot of students sort of see the benefit in doing a two-way table. It just sort of makes it a bit easier to interpret. So first of all, let's draw our Venn diagram. And you can see there that we've got 20 people and there's people that like planes and there's people that like trains. So I'm going to, I'm going to draw this out and I'm going to say that uh, planes and trains, planes and trains, and it says here that three have an interest in both planes and trains. So therefore, therefore we know that the intersection of P and T is three. 12 have an interest in trains, so that means that 3 plus 9 must equal 12. So there's going to be 9 people there, 9 people that are interested in trains alone, but not planes. And planes, we've got 10 interested in planes, so that means that that's a 7. Now, let's have a look at it. We've got 20 people. 20 people. How many does this add up to? 9 plus 7 is 16, plus 3 is 19. So therefore, we've actually got one person that does not neither like planes or trains. Now let's have a look in this and, and try to interpret the Venn diagram. This here is that this is the intersection of planes that is not trains. Okay, and then that, I guess the number of that is, is 7. The, then we've got planes and intersection with trains, and that's 3. Then over here we've got uh, we've got trains intersected with non-planes, and that is over here. There's nine, and non non-planes uh, intersected with non-trains, and then that is this one here. <coughs> so that's your Venn diagram. Now what we're going to do is a two-way table. So let's do that. First of all, we've got planes, and we've got not planes. And we know that those probabilities are going to add to one because it's either a plane or it's not a plane. <clears throat> then we've got trains. And then we've got not trains. Okay, so let's have a look and get it from the, in the Venn diagram. First of all, the intersection of uh, planes and trains is three. And that is going to be represented by this thing here. <coughs> um, intersection of P and not T, well, that is actually this 7 over here. <coughs> so there's a total of 10 people that like planes. <coughs> what about our trains? Well, we know that it's going to add up to 12, but I guess the thing is you've got to consider that's that's also considering that people like planes as well. So what we've got is non-planes. Well, if there's 10 planes, then there has to be 10 non-planes because they all have to add up to our total sample space, which is 20 people. Now, let's go, go ahead and let's sort of finish this off. <clears throat> what about the, the, the people that don't like planes but like trains? That's nine. So then this has to add to six. To, this adds to 12. And then this will, therefore this has to be eight, which means that that's one. <clears throat> so these two things both represent the same information. A lot of the time it's more beneficial though to do a two-way table with probabilities that add to one rather than all the, the outcomes. Now it says state the number of people who have interest in neither trains or planes directly from our two tab table is that is equal to one person. If a person is chosen from, from the group, find the probability that they will be have an interest in trains and planes, then the probability, there's three people out of 20, which is equal to 0 0.15 or 15%. <coughs> 
have an interest in planes only is that's 7 out of 20, which is equal to 35% if you like. And not have any interest in trains, well, that's, uh, there's 10 people that like planes, uh, sorry, there's 12 people that like trains, there's eight people that like, that do not like trains, so there's eight out of 20 outcomes, which is equal to 40%. Now it says here the probability that a person selected would have an interest in planes given, given, that word given, it's conditional probability. Okay, so how do would we write that out? The probability that they would, would have an interest in planes, so probability of planes given that there is trains. And what we're going to have to look at is we're going to have a look at the Venn diagram. <coughs> So the Venn diagram states that, that we're really only looking at this part here, given that they're trains. So rather than the possible outcomes being 20 people, there's only 12 people. So what we can say is we don't have to do use our probability formula, our conditional probability formula. We can say that three out of 12 people, or uh, 0.25 or 25% of people are interested in planes given that they're interested in trains. Okay, so when you draw, draw a Venn diagram, conditional probability is really quite easy. You're just looking at a certain section of the Venn diagram. If this was trains, probability of trains given planes, then, then we'll, rather than looking at that right side, we'd be looking at this side over here. So rather than being out of 12, it would be out of 10. So it would be three, uh, it would be three out of uh, 10. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna quickly do this and I'm gonna really quickly race through this so this video doesn't go as long as the tree diagram one previously. Probability of A, B and union B. Perfect example of using a, a two-way table. First of all, what we're gonna do is rather than write the number, we're gonna write the probability of A, the probability of not A. We're gonna set out a table like so. And then what we've got is we've got the probability of B and the probability of not B. <clears throat> and once again, those probabilities are going to add to what? They're going to add to 1. So the probability of A is not going to add to 1. The probability of A and A dash, though, are going to add to 1. So these things here are going to add to 1. Okay, and then this here, the probability of B and not B, is also going to add to 1. So let's fill out what we've got from the, from the question. The probability of A is 0 0.6. So this whole column, or sorry, row, this whole row here is going to add to 0 0.6. So we're going to write that here. Now, if that adds to 0 0.6, then the probability of not A has to therefore be 0 0.4. Let's have a look at the probability of B, which is this column here. The probability of B has to equal to 0 0.3. So I'm going to put that in down here, and therefore the probability of not B is, has to equal 0 0.7, because we know that those probabilities, is either, it is either B or it's not B. It's one or the other. So they have to add up to all of the outcomes, which is one. Now let's have a look. We've been given that this is the tricky part. This is where all students sort of have an issue. Probability of A union B. A union B means we're happy with A or we're happy with B. Let's have a look at the Venn diagram and let's shade in which of those. Given the fact that this is all A in yellow, and that adds to 0 0.6, and this is all B, which adds to 0 0.3, we can say that the probability of uh, A union B, and we know that that is equal to 0 0.7. Now, if they all add to 0 0.7, then that means that if these add to 0 0.7 and the whole table, this two by two table has to add to one, then that, f that means that the probability, or the, we can say, the probability of not A intersection not B, or this cell here, must therefore be 0 0.3. And that's the missing piece to the puzzle, because now we've got that, it becomes much easier. 0 0.3 plus 0 0.1 is 
adds to 0 0.4. 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 adds to 0 0.3. 0 0.2 plus 0 0.4 adds to 0 0.6. So now what we can do is the, find the probability of A intersection B. That's this guy here. That's 0 0.2. Using our, net, using our two way table. A union B dash. Let's have a look at that. What we're doing is we're happy with A and we're happy with B dash. If we add all of those together, 0.4 plus 0.3 plus 0.2, that is equal to 0 0.4 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2 is equal to 0 0.9 or 90%. <coughs> All right, now I'm going to keep this video short. This question six is a really straightforward one. If we've got x is equal to five, I'm going to get you to pause the video and have a go at this question now. But basically the probability of A, we've got two plus one, which is three outcomes out of eight. The probability of B is six outcomes out of eight, which simplifies to uh, three quarters or 75%. And the probability of A given B, well, that's just looking at this side of the Venn diagram, which is one of those outcomes is favourable, which is one out of, and rather than being out of eight, it's out of six. All right, so I hope you learned something from there. I think that the power of a two-way table is, uh, it can make it a little bit easier, but all this is, is a Venn diagram. So if you understand Venn diagrams, you do not need to do it. Well, it's called a Karno map. Um, it really is just a Venn diagram. All this is saying is that we've got, we've got A, and we're going to look at the probabilities here. We've got, we've got A, we've got B, and I, over here we've got sort of not A and not B, if you like, <coughs> intersection. So what is A? The probability of A is 0 0.6. So that means that this here has to add to 0 0.6, in which we've got 0 0.2 here, and we've got uh, 0 0.4 here, and therefore we've got the A and not and B, A and not B, sorry, not A and B is 0 0.1, and the probability of not B and not A is 0 0.3. And that's really all that is. If you want to draw a Venn diagram, up to you. But the two-way table does make it a bit easier. I, pre I prefer a two-way table myself. All right, so I'll leave it there. Good luck, and I uh, hope you learned something today.